Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm here to give you guys a recap on the new episode of Nanatsu no Tazai Imashimi no Fukatsu, or you call it the 7 Deadly Sins, the Revival of the Commandments, which is on episode 13. Now, this episode here was actually pretty cool, not too bad, although honestly, I really wish it could have been better if they adapted more of the scenes from the manga, because it felt a little bit short, honestly. So if anything else, let's just get this started. We have to it that Bond is reunited with Elaine and they're kissing each other and Jericho is just flustered asking why why are you doing this etc and Bond's like hey don't freak out okay this is really Elaine and Jericho's like yeah but she just slit your throat how could you just still kiss her after all that and Bond's like I can't die you're not hurt that's okay Elaine all of a sudden says I hate you and then blasted Jericho and Bond's like Take it easy, Elaine. She's not our enemy. And we have to it that Elaine's like, no, she is our enemy. She's trying to take you away from me. And we have to it that Jericho's like, what the hell are you doing, etc. And Bond stops Elaine once more and says, stop it. Come on now. And then Elaine's like, why are you protecting her? And then like Bond's like, Elaine, did I not tell you? You are my woman. My only woman. And all of a sudden, Elaine ends up gushing out ends up slicing Bond and made him gush out blood and goes like, then why the hell are you protecting her? And then she ends up venting her frustration towards Bond and says, I seen you in your freaking journey with this girl. What the hell you think you're doing uh, all these kind of things with her, huh? I wanted to go on that journey with you. You giving that dream to her instead of me? I can never forgive you. And ends up slicing him up and then Bond's like, what the hell happened to you, Elaine? And then Jericho tries to stop Elaine but gets pushed aside and then Elaine ends up injuring Bond further, but we all know that he's immortal, etc., but ends up falling down anyway. And we have to it that, like, and Jericho's like, what the hell's wrong with you, huh? Are you some spoiled brat or something? And Elaine's like, it's not my, it's your fault. I mean, Bond's trying to stop me from you taking me from him. I don't know. And then we have to it that Jericho managed to jump up high and push Elaine down and says, what the, I don't give a damn if you will control the night or something. Tell me the truth. Do you really love him? Elaine's enough for it says so, and then Jericho admits that she loves Bond too, which is pretty obvious from the start, and Elaine's like, I love Bond more than you ever did, and then Jericho's like, I won't lose him to you, and Elaine's like, truth is, Bond will never love you, he won't even give you a time of day or something, which I go like, holy damn, that's gotta hurt, and Bond's like telling Jericho, stand down Jericho, something's wrong with Elaine, she's being controlled by someone, and Jericho's like, listen, a little chip, a little midget, like you who has no chest and butt compared to me who has a chest and butt and height is more suited for butt. Also, I would never hurt the man I love for a million in my life. Never, ever, ever. I owe my life to him. And we had to that Jericho tells Elaine, but you know what? Freaking Bond abandoned everything just to do, trying to go beyond and try to find a way how to revive you. Do you have any idea what he had to go through, huh? Huh? Do you understand that? If you, I don't even care if you're freaking controlled or not. If you really love Bond, Bond as much as you say you do, then why the hell are you being controlled this easily, huh? And Elaine knows that knows all this and ends up freaking like um going to overload or like um breaking down a bit and tells so, screaming someone to stop her. But Bond just hugs it and says, "I told you, I I promise I steal you, steal you away someday. Did I not?" So how about you and I go on that journey forever? You're my woman forever. Don't forget that. And of course, Elaine cries greatly and apologizes to Bond by saying, I did not want you to see me like this. I am so, so sorry. And Bond's like, I don't care if you have filthy parts here and there. I'll take all of you. I am Bond the Sin of Greed after all. But all of a sudden, Elaine suddenly felt really weak and Bond tries to tell Elaine, Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't give up. And we had to it that Mel Skua and Gaian appears right behind Bond and says, this was meant to happen. Should she, like, um, really, um, put her grudge away, yada, 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 then I could just tell you right now, like, um, she's more than ready to die once and for all, you know? That kind of thing. I'm thinking in my mind, god dang, dude, you're just ticking Bond off right now, and Bond asks them who they are, and they go like, I'm Melisculler of Fate, and God and the Truth of the Ten Commandments, and Bond's like, summoning his weapon, I'm gonna kill you right now. And Garland all of a sudden ends up appearing behind him and slices him in two using critical strike or something. And Bond's like, and of course Garland's still upset knowing that the wound and humiliation that Garland was endured by Meliodas is not enough for him to, is not, this is not enough to satisfy him. And Bond's like, so, 
Melio Tancho is like the cap is a traitor to the demon clan, huh? And Gon's like, how the hell are you still alive? And Bond explains that he's Bond the Undead. He can't die no matter what you do. And of course, Gon hits him and blasts his head off, but he still comes back up. And Gon, on the other hand, sees Bond interesting and says, okay, and, and, apolog and, and my apology for you for me calling you a vermin, I'll allow you one hit on me. So, care to show me what you got? And Mel School's like, hey, you know this is gonna kill you right now, right? And Gon's like, this is two versus one. Consider this a handicap. And Bond's like, <laughs> you sure you wanna do this and you won't have any regrets? And Gon's like, I will not go back on my word. And therefore, Bond uses Hunter Fest, and all of a sudden, there's a bunch of things falling down. And Bond, on the other hand, landed a major hit on Gollin and ends up actually pushing Mel School back. And this is where, like, um, it felt a little bit short because, um, in the manga, the fight was a little bit more extended and much more better. I'm really upset to see that A1 Pictures didn't really adapt some of those scenes in there because of what's going on here. Of course, Bond does pummel Gollum down to the ground, and Mel Skula says, yeah, this guy stole a lot of living beings' his powers, etc., and apparently is very stronger than you right now, Gollum. And we have to it that Mel Skula actually makes a very good like a assumption why Bond can't steal any more power. And Bond tries to attack her, but Mel Skula uses Cocoon of Darkness. And ends up having a conversation with Bond and tells him that, t tells him that sh sh he has a very good soul right here. Because despite like, um, despite your lover bearing her fangs against you, you never doubted or react in anger in your heart or something. Now that is something very beautiful and I commend you for. Because those who are showed faithlessness before me will have this eye set ablaze. Which apparently happened in last week's episode, etc. And we have to it that, um, Mel Schooler does commend Bond for putting up a fight and actually having a good soul for not reacting towards, um, Elaine, etc. But also ask him, what do you think happened when the soul dies? You go into emptiness, obviously, and Bond can only like freak out a bit, but it was too late. Mel Skula uses her magic to push Bond's soul out of his body and ends up grabbing him. While Bond is reminiscing about those times with his captain, Hawk, everyone else he cares cares about, we have to it that um, Melly Otis realizes something is wrong with Bond, but cannot figure out what's up. And we have to it that Gon's like, hey, can I have his soul? And Mel is like, uh-uh, this one is mine. And we have to it that Elaine distracts Mel Schooler long enough for Bond to escape, but Gon grabs him and says, thank you for the food, and munches on him. And this really made Elaine scream in total agony and despair while Mel Schooler and Gon have a little bickering moment with each other because of what's been ha what happened. And we have to it that Jericho was about to fight, um... Gollum and Mel it in an impossible way, but Bond, on the other hand, is somehow back in his body and ends up having to like um take two of the, both one 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 heart one of heart of the each and ends up destroying destroying it and they end up running off. And we had to it that Gon's like, "How the hell is he alive, dude? I just ate his soul. What the hell?" And we have to it that um, Bond explains to Jericho and Elaine that Zivago took his place to be eaten instead, which really is sad. So I go like, God dang it, dude, what a freaking mess. And we have to it that Elaine and Bond, on the other hand, gets picked up by Jericho when they told told the other told Jericho to take the other and run. But Jericho's like, man, I'm taking you both and you owe me big time for this. You freaking hear me? And we have to it that um, that we see a scene with like um, Fraudron and Dreyfus's body ends up fighting against Deldri and Aldan or whatever that kid's name, spiky gray hair. And they end up having to capture the guy due to like Deldri using love drive, which increases like some kind of love hormone or sex hormone in the human's body, etc. Along with like um, what you may call it, um, what's been going on here, while um. The gray spiky hair kid, which I forgot his name, ends up having a power known as Vayne. And he, if you get hit by his weapons, you have to use more magic than you have to to, to like um, activate what you have to use. And as for like um, what's you even call it, the other guy, which I forgot his name, ends up blocking um, Dreyfus's attack and ends up taking with them 
taking him with him. And of course, we had to that Grey Ward was actually watching from the above of what's been going on here and there. And of course, that was pretty ridiculous. Of course, there's a new ending, etc. Pretty cool. And preview of the next episode is called Master of the Sun. Yes, people, yes. Next week is what we all have been waiting for, dude. Like, no, tomorrow, oh my lord. I'm gonna flip my freaking... <laughs> My freaking TV screen here and there. Well, not my TV screen, but many things above that. Anyways, I li really look forward to it. So, yeah, until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. So, I'm Alpha Zero, people. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time, right? Peace out. Bye bye. Toot toot.